Welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. We are now on an exclusive module only on writing skills. And this module particularly focuses on writing skills which will ensure a very good job opportunity for you. We started with module number 5 and in module number 5, lecture number 1, I discussed with you about the various mechanics of writing a good letter. So, we looked at the various elements, we looked at the tricks, techniques in writing a very good letter. Now, having done that, with the same skeleton that we use for writing a letter, we will be applying some modifications, but the basic structure remains the same when we are going to talk about job application letter. Apart from job application letter, I am also going to talk about cover letter that encloses a bio data or a CV or a resume. So, now in this module that is module number 5 and lecture number 2, the first focus is on job application letter, but overall in this module you will learn about job application letter and then cover letter followed by the differences between bio data, CV and a resume. Very often all these three terms, all these three concepts are being misused, abused or inadvertently used instead of one, the other one is used. So, where you should send a resume, you happen to send a bio data and you never know why your uh, bio data got rejected, thinking that you sent a resume, you have sent a bio data. So, we will try to understand the basic differences between bio data, CV and a resume and go one by one looking at what elements constitute a bio data and a CV and a resume. To start with, let me recall some of the aspects of professional writing that I discussed with you in the previous lecture. If you remember, I was asking you to focus on three aspects of professional writing and here I would call them as three P's. What are the three P's that you should focus when you are going to write something professionally? When I mean professionally, the other equivalent term is business writing, the writing that you use for business communication purposes. And when it is professional, the opposite is amateur. So, you are not writing like an amateur, you are not writing like a young inexperienced person who writes a letter for the first time. You are writing like a professional, like when you write the letter, when you send the cover letter, when you send the resume, you should get the job opportunity in the form of interview call letter. So, how to ensure that and what is that that is making this professional. Remember the three P's of professional writing, it should be purposeful first, it should be purposeful, it should be people oriented and it should be precise. So, that is what I call as the three P's, purposeful, people oriented and precise. Now, what do I mean by purposeful? Write a letter send a bio data only when you have definite purpose in mind, only when you have something to convey. This means, this is not like writing an informal letter to your friend about a mo movie that you watched or sending an SMS to your friend about uh, some recent happening in your neighborhood or sending some uh, very frivolous uh, data, sharing it on your uh, Facebook and all that. No, this is not that informal kind of writing. This business writing has a clear cut purpose defined at the beginning itself. So, if you do not have a purpose, you do not write anything that is to do with business communication, otherwise it is going to mar the business relationship. Whether it is between a boss and a worker or it can be between you as the employee and the employer who is going to get your letter and give you the call letter for interview and later take you as his employee. Now, between these relationships, you cannot take things for granted. So, assure your purpose, 
think about the purpose, make it clear cut before you start writing. The next one is it should be people oriented. By people oriented, I mean make it audience oriented. Know your audience, try to make a research on the audience and then find what will interest them. In case of job application, your audience happens to be the employer, the review committee, the panel that is going to interview you, the committee that will sit for shortlisting you after reading your resumes or uh, CVs. Now, have you sent something that will interest and impress these people? So, make it audience centered, focus totally on them. How do you focus totally on them? You can do that by taking their perspective. How do you take that perspective? When you apply a job application letter, look at it from the other perspective. The other person who is sitting at the other end, let us say in the scrutiny committee, will he find this interesting? Will he find this impressive? Will he think of shortlisting this and taking it to the next level? Ask yourself this question. If you sit among this panel, will you find this impressive? If you cannot find it impressive, then how will they find it impressive? Then what should you do to make it impressive? So, put yourself in their shoes, focus your application in such a manner that it catches their attention, sustains their interest and makes them give you the desired response. In this case, make them send you the call letter for interview. So, focus on them, make it people oriented and then the golden rule of business communication, be precise, be concise, be clear. Not even a single word should be removed from your writing part. By, remo by removing, it should not give sense at all. It should not be possible for people to remove sentences, paragraphs and still your writing makes sense. This means your writing is very loose, very unorganized. Be precise, tell what you mean, write what you mean and convey what is in your mind clearly, concisely, effectively. So, keep these three things in mind at the outset that if you want to become a professional writer, whether it is writing a job application or writing a research proposal, you should keep these three P's that is you should be purposeful, you should be people oriented, audience oriented and you should be precise in your communication. Now, keeping that in mind, I will come back to some more mechanics at a later stage, but let us ask the question, why a job application letter? Why should you send this letter? Can't you just send an SMS and ask them, hey, give me a chance for uh, interview? Can't you just send an email? Now, why this letter format in particular? Although we are in an internet age, so, we are using satellite communication, why people still go for job application letter? Now, letter as such, you should understand is a written record. So, most of the business communication is record oriented. So, it wants something that can be kept in a permanent manner. So, written record, permanence and then formality also demands that you should send it in this form. And apart from formality, it is also formal to send it. It is informal if you use email, if it is informal if you just use a text messaging, but it is formal when it is written in the form of a job application letter. So, it is formal, it is permanent, it is record oriented and of course, it appears to be conservative, but most of the job situations at the beginning at least starts with this kind of conservative approach. So, we have to bear with that. Now, having accepted that, again I use another three, there are three purposes for writing a job application letter. What are the three purposes? The first purpose and the main purpose of a job application letter is that it serves the function of a cover letter that introduces the resume or bio data or CV. That is, it has the function of a cover letter, it has the function of a cover letter to give you a kind of preview, to make you interested in reading what comes later in the form of a CV or resume. So, it has that primary function. Now, in some cases, people do not demand a separate CV, they do not give a prescribed format of a bio data, when they do not demand it 
and when you run short of time, you think that you will combine the job application in the form of both a cover letter and a buy data. So, in the absence of a buy data, job application letter also serves the function of sending a CV along with the cover letter. It has both this function. Secondly, it highlights the strengths to the reader. It tries to put at the beginning, focuses on the merits, the best aspect of you that has been highlighted in the cover letter, so that the people can get into other details later. Like if you watch a James Bond movie, the first 5 minutes, 7 minutes, 10 minutes, Bond's best mission is shown to you, okay. his caliber, his talent, his aplomb, his skill, everything is put into that first 10 minute mission that is shown to you. And then there is a long detailed mission that the movie takes care in the remaining part. So, is your job application letter, first it gives you a kind of preview about the kind of person that you are and then CV, buy data or resume takes care of the detailing part of what you are. The third one, it tries to gain an interview and the good ones actually gets an interview. First, it is just a cover letter, second, after being a cover letter, it tries to highlight your strength and third, by doing so, it tries to gain an interview for you. So, these are the three purposes of writing a job application letter and what are the features, what are the basic features? Job application letter is just like a sales letter. In a sales letter, you sell a product, in job application letter, you also sell a product, in this case the product is you. The package is you, your talent, your skill, your time, your efforts, your interest, your motivation, your commitment and everything, sometimes you give everything, even the time that you give to family is also given to the job, depending on the pay package they are willing to offer you. So, here you are there to sell you, to sell the best of you, to highlight the best of you and in this sense it resembles a sales letter, then it sells just like the sale letter, the candidate skills and talents and it tries to beat the competition at the outset. So, when you are a sales person, you try to not only sell your product, but also you try to highlight the cutting edge of buying your product. Why should somebody buy your product instead of buying something else? So, at the outset it tries to have that cutting edge and beat the competition. So, you are unique, you are the best. So, that is what the job application letter tries to highlight. It includes brief information about education, experience, extracurricular activities and referees. Whereas, when you get inside the buy data, it gives detailed, full, complete information about all these aspects, all these items that will come in the job application letter. Now, let us look at a job application letter. This is more or less an old model and it is a combination of a cover letter and CV or combination of a cover letter and a buy data. If you look at the various components, you will find that this is just like any letter, any business letter that we had discussed in the previous lecture. Look at the right side top corner, we begin with the heading or we begin with the address of the candidate. So, Rahul Gupta at 116B Jopling Road, Lucknow and pin code is given. The internal punctuation is used if you remember and then the date is given. So, we discussed that it is better to mention the month clearly, so that it does not cause any confusion. So, it is spelt out in word form. So, first the address and then the date and then to the person to whom it is sent. So, the general manager, Tata Consultancy Services, Abilash Building, plot number 96, EPIP Industrial Area, Whitefield Road, Bangalore with PIN code. Okay. Now, in some cases, like in the letter format, the subject and the reference is given separately here, in which case the first line is avoided. In this case, the writer, the candidate has chosen to give subject and reference as the first line. 
the instead of giving it at the outset separately. Now, in this case you begin with the subject, you begin with the reference, look at this. After the salutation, dear sir, sometimes it is respected sir, if it is a very honorable person. I would like to be considered for the post of system analyst. So, the post advertised for is system analyst, that is the subject, he wants to apply for this. Which you advertised, what is the reference, is giving in the Times of India on 25th March 2013. So, the reference is given along with the subject, so the post applied for. What about the remaining part? So, the remaining part contains whatever I said at the beginning, the education, the extracurricular activities, but not in detail. Let us look at it very quickly. Look at the next paragraph. I passed the B.Tech degree examination in computer engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur in 2010. What is he trying to tell? He is telling about the educational qualifications. He did something in computer engineering, got the B.Tech degree, the year in which he qualified. I passed the examination in first class. Apart from education, he is also trying to locate, identify the position. He is telling the rank and was first among the successful candidates of the year. Earlier in 2006, I passed the higher secondary exam, school examination of Uttar Pradesh board of examinations in the first class. He is trying to tell that I am a computer graduate education wise and I maintain a consistent first class. He is highlighting the uniqueness in him. Then since July 2010, I have been employed as a programmer in next generation corporation in Pune. Now what is he trying to tell? I have been employed, he is trying to give the detail of his employment, that is work experience, previous experience or the current experience. What did he do? He is not just telling that I was getting experience here, he also says I have acquired a thorough knowledge of the programming processes and assembling of accessories for computer and mobile products. So what is he good at? What did he learn from them? So that also he says, highlights, followed by that education is over, work experience is over. What is the next thing he is saying? He says, during my study in college, I was a member of the robotics club. So, something extracurricular for three years. He is also specifying the duration. I attended three inter-IIT competitions. So, apart from being a member, did he do something about it? Can he show something about his skill. So, he says that he attended inter-IIT competitions and won prizes for the various robotic models I developed. So, he is saying it is not just going for fun, not just going as a hobby, but he has also won prizes. So, he is positioning his talent, his skills, even his extracurricular activities he is trying to show that he is really doing something. And then he says, I am 24 years old, my date of birth being 30th March 1989. He just gives a minor personal detail and more details we can expect from the bio data. And there is a single line reference, Mr. V. Oisman Arora, general manager of Next Gen Corporation in Pune, has agreed to be a referee on this application and will give you any information you may require regarding my service with this company. So, he is one referee. So, probably he has more referees in the buy data or he just wants to highlight the only one that he has got. He has mentioned it here. I hope you will consider my application favorably. He was faithfully Raghul Gupta and then he is enclosing photocopies of mark certificates, testimonials from the head and all that. Now, sometimes as I said, although it can be accompanied by a bio data. Most of the times when this much details are given, it also serves a quick function of combining job application with bio data. In certain cases, a simple cover letter is written instead of even a detailed job application letter and then it is enclosed with CV or bio data. Now, when the cover letter becomes simple and it does the purpose only of being a cover letter and rest of the details are sent to bio data or CV. So, it looks like this. Apart from the fact that the arrangement of inside address, outside address, subject, 
reference, salutation, everything remains the same. All the components of writing a good letter remains the same. Only the body changes and the body is shortened. Look at this. He again begins with the reference, but very short. I would like to be considered for the position of design engineer, which you advertised in the Times of India on this date. Then, I have enclosed a copy of my CV by data. Now, he is not highlighting the educational qualifications, he is not talking about extracurricular activities, but he is just saying that my by data is there or he may say CV, which shows that I have the qualifications specified by you. So, he says that whatever you had asked for advertised, they are there in my by data, why do not you take a look at it. But then just to give a preview, just to highlight one aspect of it, he says, I specialized on computer aided design during my undergraduate and my work with Center for Development of Advanced Computing that is CDEC has enabled me to acquire a sound knowledge of special purpose machines. So, I did something there and then I learned something there. So, maybe that might be of some interest to you. So, that is highlighting and then like the similar letter he also says, I hope you will consider my application favorably. But after signing, one new addition here in the enclosures is his biodata. So, he first puts by data, it can be CV or it can be resume. So, as I said, we are going to discuss about the differences, but right now it can be any one of them. And then photocopies of mark certificates, testimonial from the head, etcetera, etcetera. So, those things follow, but the cover letter, the first enclosure is by data or CV or resume. Let us try to understand the differences between bio data, CV and resume. As I said, more often these three terms are being used synonymously or used one for the other and then the result is adverse. People expect something and then something else is sent. People want a six paged CV and then one paged resume was sent. People want to know the family details, the background the way the person has been pruned up, brought up. So, they wanted a detailed by data, but then the CV fell short of it. So, understand the expectations. Once again, you be people oriented and then try to suit whether you should send a by data or a CV or a resume. But before you try to resolve what should you send, you should know the differences first and you should know how to write whether a by data or a CV or a resume. Now, bio data is short for biographical data. So, when we say biographical data, it has the implication of autobiographical also. Just like the writer writing a novel about himself, here the candidate is writing a short data of himself, giving a very historical perspective, birth, background, education, career aspirations, extracurricular, etcetera, etcetera. But this gives a clear historical perspective of the candidate. Bio data is short for biographical data. It includes complete factual details about the candidate's life and work experiences, complete factual details. This is the major difference between bio data, CV and resume. CV and resume can omit, can hide, can conceal some factual data, whereas in by data, factual data should be represented as it is, because as I said, it is giving a historical perspective. Now, the items in the by data are serialized, even serial number is given 1, 2, 3, 4 like that and arranged from a chronological order, that is first thing first, so name, date of birth, so, where you are born, what is the place, who is your father, so it goes like that and then education also it is arranged again from a chronological order, what you did first that is starting from your 10th then higher secondary, then it goes to your undergraduate, then postgraduate, then research that is PhD, then postdoctoral, then other experiences, then industrial experiences etcetera. So, it goes in that order. 
So, the sequence is one after another and starting from the first first. Now, why uh, this kind of Y data, what is the logic behind it? So, uh, you must be surprised to know that this term has come from psychology and then people are using this biographical data to understand and predict the fact that if you collect the data of the past performance, you will be able to predict the future performance of the person, the individual, the candidate. So, they wanted to know the past, so that they can predict the future. So, this is the basic. So, they still believe that the candidate's past performance is taken to predict his future performance. So, if you know what he has done in the past, you will be able to gauge which direction he will move what he will do in the future. That is why bi data is asked for. So, what will it include? It includes even the physical attributes such as age, height, weight, even in some cases they even mention the hair color, skin color, eye color and usually it is combined with the latest photo, passport size. Now, another basic difference between a bi data CV and a resume is that Biodata functionally originates from British and used quite frequently commonly in India. So, since generally we follow the standard uh, British practice in India, so Biodata is both British as well as Indian and today in the contemporary context it is more of Indian. So, Biodata is typical of Indian because culturally when we look at somebody, we always try to identify that somebody with the background, the family background, the social background, the religious background, the overall cultural brought up. Whereas, in a place like US, individualism is given more importance. So, background did not matter when they looked at individuals. So, we will come to that when we talk about resume, but right now about by data. I am just giving this much introduction and when we go to the details, it will become much clear. Now, differences between CV and resume and along with bi data, CV if you look at it, it is short for curriculum vitae, short for curriculum vitae and it is a Latin phrase, it is taken from the Latin word curriculum vitae. What does it mean? It literally means the course of life the course of life and it is taken to mean your career graph, your career progress, your life and career progress. The focus is more on career and with giving some details about life. What does it do? CV is an overview of a person's experience and other qualifications. CV gives an overview of a person's experience and other qualifications. It is a long synoptic account, so which means it is like a synopsis, it is a long synoptic account of the candidate's professional experience, qualifications and some personal information. Whereas, a bi data will give the complete personal information, CV adds some personal information, but the larger perspective is on the career progress, how the person is uh, progressing career wise. So, that is given more importance and it is like a synopsis. The emphasis is on the information and it changes according to the particular position applied. That means, when a CV is written, it is quite flexibly written. So, there is like a CV that is the main one and then it is modified, certain aspects are highlighted, certain aspects are removed according to the post, according to the company to which it is applied for. So, it is a flexible one. Now, where does it originate from? What is it functionally used? Where is it currently used? Now, the usage once again is British and then commonly used in India. But nowadays, resume has become much more popular and then uh, maybe because of globalization and people are nowadays not talking about bi data or CV, 
but generally they talk about resume. Often some people think resume is a by writer, resume is a CV. In a sense, yes, it also contains most of the educational and uh, career wise qualifications that the person has, just like in the way he has in by data or in a CV. But no, in the sense, it is much more different, especially culturally. Now, look at the basic difference. Whereas CV had this Latin origin, resume. Again, mind the pronunciation, it is not resume, which is mispronunciation, it is resume, resume, which is French and which just means summary. It is a French word which means summary. Summary of what? So, summary of again your life and career. It is a short descriptive summary of your academic and work history. The life details are very minimal, almost nil in this. So, if you look at the percentage of your life details, by data sometimes goes from 40 to 60 percent, whereas CV it is about 30 to 20 percent and in resume sometimes it is 10 percent, 5 percent, 0. So, life details are minimized or sometimes no life details, but the focus is on academic and work history. Resume is a document containing a focused sketch of relevant job experience and education. I repeat, it is a document containing a focused sketch. So, so many details which are even given in a CV is removed here and it is a focused sketch of a relevant job experience and education career is tailor made suited to the position, the job that has been advertised for. It is often synonymously treated with CV, but two or three differences I already told you. The cultural origin is uh, British for CV and American for uh, resume, but apart from that the page wise difference. CV can run from anything from 4 to 8 pages. I have seen CVs running up to 15 pages, 20 pages describing the entire career of a person with lots of accomplishments. More than 20 also you can see CVs, exceptional cases. Just like the synopsis of a PhD thesis, they write very elaborate CVs. Whereas, when it is resume, it is shorter than a CV. The usual length, the ideal length happens to be 1 to 3 pages and the best resumes, the winning resumes are mostly just one page. So, if you can put everything in one page, so you already have this one page advantage. So, you are, you are easing the pain of the reader, so when you give just one page. So, good resumes or just one page to once, it goes up to two pages, three pages, even four pages, but a CV can go above this, it is higher than this in terms of the quantity that it puts inside the document. The usage is typically American compared to CV and biodata which are typically Indian and uh, British. Now, let us look at various items that will come in a biodata. As I said, it begins with some details of the person, it is autobiographical it is biographical. So, it begins with the name, the complete name and then it goes with the father's name. Whereas, this is avoided when you come to resume, I will talk about that, but let us focus on by data. Starts with name and then father's name and again the full name of the father is given. Date of birth as well as it goes with age, even date of birth is written, sometimes they also write the age place of birth, if the place of birth is something like Madurai, so then the district whether it is coming under Madurai district or something else and then if it is still unfamiliar then where is it, it is Tamil Nadu or Andhra Pradesh. So, the district, the state is also mentioned along with the place of birth and nationality, so Indian or US citizen, so where do you belong to, so your citizenship, so that is also mentioned languages known. 
So, how many languages you speak, read, write? So, a person may speak for example, English, Hindi, then Marathi, but apart from that the person also speaks some foreign languages like French as well as German, but the person cannot read and write all these languages. So, he can for example, write in French, but he cannot write in German, but he can read both. So, sometimes a tabular column is drawn to indicate what is read, what can be written and what can be spoken and the language is put under this column. Sex, here it is male or female, so it is mentioned that way and then present address. So, present address is against permanent address. So, present address is the address in which he gives the current address for communication, which is different of course, from permanent address. So, present address can mean the place where the candidate is working, living currently. Permanent address is the place where his parents are there or his actual ancestral home is there. This is followed by phone number. Now, mobile numbers are also given, email ID, fax and then educational qualifications. Educational qualifications again has details of institution, name of the course, year in which it is passed that in sometimes the entire duration is given, date of joining and date of leaving, degree, what is the degree, B tech, M tech, B A, M A subjects very briefly it is mentioned. So, English language and literature or economics, philosophy, psychology, max, physics, chemistry etcetera, marks and or grade especially given in percentage and then the position, the rank. So, this is also given. So, whether it is uh, uh, first rank, whether the person is a gold medalist. So, these details also come here. The complete details about the education no room is given to the reader. The reader should not wonder, oh CPA, so what is the percentage? I do not know. Grade A 1 plus, I do not understand this. So, you also give the percentage to make it very clear. And then comes other details such as extracurricular activities and sports and there is a caution here. Why should you be cautious while giving about your prizes, medals, awards won? when you can give everything about educational qualifications. The reason is this, in some cases you might not have won some prizes, you may not have medals, you may not have awards. So, when I say prizes, medals and awards only if you have categories one under these three names, then you can put them. So, if you have a prize, mention it, if you do not have a prize, you have only medal, you say only medal or if you do not have prizes and medals, you have some awards one, mention only the awards. So, this depends on how many awards, how many prizes, how many medals you have won. In case unfortunately, you have not won any prizes, any awards, even you can omit this item. It is not mandatory that you put it and then say nil, not applicable. So, that creates a bad impression. Same with extracurricular activities. So, if you have done something in terms of extracurricular activities, today there is no candidate who has not done any extracurricular activities. It could be your participation in NSS, NCC, it could be doing something in terms of some club that you have joined, like even it could be uh, the robotics club that you have joined. So, it could be anything that is coming under the non curriculum activities that is not the main curriculum activities which you did it as an extra work during your stay in the campus. So, think of that there will be something or other which you can put here and then experience. This is another important component in, component in bio data. You talk about the organization first where you worked or the company followed by the dates that is the period and then the position held and then the duties. So, what kind of duties you performed? It is not enough to say that, oh I was a manager there, but then what did you do as a manager? Did you supervise somebody, something went to your site? So, mention all these things. 
And then another tricky part, but then in buy data it is mentioned, present salary it is mentioned in complete details and salary expected. So, usually it is safe to say by looking at the post advertised, identify the salary, the pay structure and then mention the pay structure, indicate you are willing to take anything as per the norms or as applicable, but mention the expected one as per their permissible norms. Do not ask for skies, that also is going to create a bad impression. Followed by hobbies, now again hobbies can also make or mar your career. If you have some hobbies, mention it. So, there are interesting hobbies like even people mentioned about stone collecting. So, collecting colorful stones, stamp collecting, collecting coins. So, these are all hobbies which uh, many of you have it even from childhood, you, even you can mention that. But again as I said, this is tricky because sometimes hobbies can mar your career, but it can also make your career. I will give you examples how it can mar your career. So, you say that you have uh, uh, interest in acting. So, suddenly people tell you that can you enact a small scene from this movie or this one, you say no, no, uh, I do not know, I do not know how to do that and then you shy away from this. So, you disprove the hobbies that you had mentioned. Again do not put playing cricket. Unless you are playing at district level and won some certificates, if something that could be done by everybody, so then do not put it. Look at an example, one uh, IPS candidate was interviewed and she was just sitting on a third floor and then the interview was being conducted on the third floor and she had written that uh, she is uh, interested in uh, music and also she is in interested in uh, gardening and uh, environmental protection. So, then she was asked that music, uh, why is she interested? Then she said that she is also a good singer, she can uh, sing uh, Carnatic songs. So, quickly asked her to sing something and then she demonstrated it and then when she said she is interested in gardening and then environmental protection. They asked her, can you tell something about the plant that is, the, it is a climber, it has climbed up to this, it is a vine and it has climbed up to this third floor. So, can you say something about this? Without turning back, she said that this is a very special plant, it can grow only during this particular season, particular time. This manure has to be given, it has to be watered in this manner. So, how did you know this? She even mentioned the botanical name, common name. When they asked how did you note this, she said since I am interested. So, I was just taking a look at the plants that you are growing. I found that there is a special person, either the gardener or somebody here who is taking care of this because if it is not taken adequate care, this plant will die. The fact that it has grown up to third floor, this care has been taken for about six or seven years. So, it was remarkably uh, good from the candidate's side and no doubt there was one of the panel members in the interview who was taking care of the plant and he was so pleased and he ranked there with highly commended uh, merit. So, hobby can make your career. Somebody wrote magic as his hobby, they said can you do some magic. So, he said that yeah why not, so he's, he asked for a 5 rupee coin, they gave a coin and then he just stood up and then he put his hand on one of the ears of the panel member and the coin disappeared and then he took the coin from the other ear of another panel member. So, magic he just proved it, they knew that he was tricking, but for a minute it was magic and they were terribly impressed and so on. Somebody uh, uh, wrote as hobby as origami. So, making paper toys. So, again they doubted, they asked can you do something, he said fine you give me some waste papers, they gave him some waste papers, he did something twisted here and there and there is an helicopter and then he did something again, there is a bird and then its beak is open, close. So, it is as if when it is hungry, it is opening the beak. 
So, very quickly he showed them two, three toys which are very impressive and done in two, three minutes. So, it proved that when they write something as hobbies, these candidates mean it, they are not trying to fool them. So, keep this in mind, when you write something, it can make or mar your career. And references, so give not just names, but also their positions, addresses of three referees with phone number, email and then write the date, place and then at the end of it, you should also sign it. Now, having said this, very quickly when you write a buy data, put your best foot forward. So, present yourself in the best manner possible, but still be honest, do not try to put fraudulent details into it, which will be found out later and then you could be punished for it. Sometimes you can be legally punishable if you hide your data, especially with regard to marks. Do not boast or make exaggerated claims. So, state it as it is. Do not say, I can do this, I can do that, but when they ask you, you are not able to do even the smallest thing possible and do not give wrong information. Do not cover up weak aspects. Instead, think of ways to defend it in the interview. That means, when you have something weak, one weak thing that uh, very often people ask you is, why is it that uh, you got during your higher secondary 99 percentage, but when you came for undergraduate, you got 80 percentage and when you qualified your post graduation, you have got only 70. Now, this is showing a decline in your career. How do you justify this? Think of ways to justify it. So, there could be some personal problem, there could be some time management problem, there should be some issues related to the complexity of the subject that you have chosen or you may be working in a university where the highest mark itself is 70 and you are the topper. So, prove it by defending it, but do not try to hide it. Okay. And then extracurricular hobbies or activities as I told you can make or mar your uh, career. So, that also you should be careful. Now, while concluding, I want to highlight another three phases which are important when you write your job application letter as well as your bio data. There are three stages when you write, we call it as pre-writing, while writing or writing and then post writing or editing or revising. Now, in pre-writing, what should you do? Before you start writing, focus on the content, even you can make a rough draft, write very quickly what should be there in your bio data, what should be highlighted, what should be there in the letter. Survey your audience, if you do not know them, try to find out who will be there in the panel, get some inside information, suit your message. Now, once you know the audience, try to suit your message according to their needs and anticipate the result. If you write this letter, will they give you the interview call letter or not? Anticipate the result. And second phase is writing phase. In this writing phase, whether it is job application letter or your bio data, although I have given a pro forma, try to organize the researched material, especially in terms of contents, try to organize it in proper manner. Plan the beginning, the middle and the end. Even in job application letter, there is a proper beginning, middle and the end. Use rough sketch, write rough, make as many rough drafts as possible before actually you do this. Use a kind of mind mapping, use a flow chart, decide what will come first, what will come next, from that next what other extra points can you add. So, if you use a kind of flow chart, it will be easy for you to map it mentally. The third final phase is this editing phase, which is also revising phase, which is very important. This is the phase in which you do grammar and spell check both for job application letter as well as your by data, you do the spell check. In certain cases, they will specify the word count, check whether you are following the word count correctly. So, if they say that it should not exceed this many words, do not exceed the number of words, use the computer for doing this and then level. Sometimes, you go for a very high level of readability. So, choose a level that will be acceptable, this again computer will grade you, it will also help you. Rearrange some of the materials for clarity and effectiveness. Even in job application letter, you will realize that sometimes the one that you put somewhere in the body middle, 
you may feel that that could be the last line just before the complementary close or sometimes you may think that even I can begin with this. So, that again creates a very riveting impression, very good impression. So, think of that. So, you try to rearrange, do not hesitate to do that. The entire revision when you are doing it, rethink, rethink whether you have written the good application, rethink over the entire biodata and then ask questions, will you be able to accept it and if you think, no I should modify this, I should change it, change it. Most important, when you send it as a cover letter, check the tone, check the attitude. Are you polite enough or are you by mistake sounding to be little bit rude and impolite? For example, if you say at the end, I expect you to send the interview call letter in the next three days, you are sounding rude because sending the interview call letter is the employer's privilege. So, he decides to send or not. You cannot ask him to grant that and asking him to grant it within a stipulated period of time is being too presumptuous, which is also rude. So, be careful in such kind of phrases. If you think that your tone is reflecting a very bad attitude, remove it. And overall, try to evaluate your goal. Try to ask yourself whether your goal of getting this interview call letter, your goal of getting a particular job, achieving that position in the company, has it been spelt out very clearly in both your cover letter and by writer? If it is done so, so then you can close it and then you can send it. Now, there are some references, you can go further which clearly talk about business communication as well as writing these uh, letters as well as it also makes difference between CV, by data and a resume. The most famous one is of course from uh, uh, Courtland and then uh, Thiri, the book on business communication today. There are so many editions, the one that I refer to is the seventh edition and it is published by Pearson Education. Another book that I find it very interesting is by Mary Ellen Gaffey on essentials of business writing, which has a very simple clear perspective of telling you all these differences and details. And of course, there is also this Andrea Rutherford's basic communication skills for technology. Again, it tries to tell you how to write a professional CV, how to write a professional letter and how to make it business like. And hopefully these books, when you go for further references, will help you to locate, establish yourself as a very good business communicator. So, with all these things, I will come back to discuss again with you about more differences in terms of CV as well as resume. In this one, we have completed introducing job application letter, discussing about cover letter and then following cover letter with by data. In the next two lectures, I am going to talk to you about CV, writing a CV, mechanics of a CV and then how to distinguish that from a resume and I will spend more time of on resume because today resume has achieved so much significance thanks to globalization and thanks to the job opportunities we are able to get internationally. So, with this note, I conclude. Thank you so much.